Full of it. Thank you, sir. Good speech. Good speech. I call the honourable member Andrew Little. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. It's a pleasure to take a call on the local uh, government, local electoral amendment bill number two. And so, what a pity that. Uh, in a debate that has been free of the usual sort of recriminations and acrimony uh, that sometimes characterises debate in this House, that the last speaker should, the last member who spoke, should descend into vague, non-specific allegations um, on uh, matters concerning the electorate. It was also disappointing. It was also disappointing that, that the honourable member uh, Alfred Naro uh, should should retreat to the uh, age-old cries that are frankly becoming a little boring now, that Labor had nine years to do something about it, but didn't. And then said, and then said oh, both, both mayoral candidates in the 2010 Auckland mayoralty, uh, both candidates received donations and completely overlooking the fact that the origins of this bill have one place, one place. And it starts with a member who sits on the benches opposite me, and they were grubby, nasty actions by that member that have prompted the enactment of this legislation. You know, the pity of it all is, and the pity of it is, and, it, and it's disappointing that the members opposite don't recognise it, that once upon a time, Mr Speaker, we had a culture in this country, whether it was around elections, whether it was around the running of businesses, that people didn't just comply with the letter of the law, they complied with the spirit of it. That people understood that in a civilised society that we have rules and we have laws and that they are there for good reason and that they are about respecting each other and therefore respecting the law. And in the last few years, last couple of decades, that value, those principles, have gone out the window and we now have a culture where it is regarded as acceptable usually by people who flutter on the right politically whose people who flutter on the right politically who are no longer care about the spirit of the law it is just their black letter and the first question to ask by those on the right is what can i get away with what can i do that is on the margins of the law because I don't have to worry about values and principles and the spirit of the law anymore. And this legislation, this bill tonight, has as its origins actions that have that flavour written all over it. The, the thing is this, the thing is this, is that it is bad enough that in our history we have seen some pretty bad shenanigans when it comes to central government elections. But we never had local body elections infected and contaminated as badly as that. We never saw the chicanery, the double dealing, the manipulation that we saw in the 2010 Auckland mayoral election. And it is that event and that event alone that has prompted this House to have to give its time and attention to this legislation. It all changed, Mr Speaker, in 2010. It all changed and we have crossed the Rubicon and we will never go back. And so we have now had to do what I think probably eventually, historically, will be seen as a sensible change, which is aligning the electoral laws covering local government elections uh, with those covering general elections. But let's not forget it all started in Auckland. And so this bill owes its existence to one person who sits in this House, and that is John Banks, because he forgot about and did not properly declare donations from Kim.com, the largest, most colourful figure in New Zealand politics in a generation. He did not think to properly declare his Sky City donation that he received in cash, in envelopes, personally. And so what we have seen is that the, our ethical standards have dropped. And you know, the pity of it is too, when members of the government, when members representing this government, including the Prime Minister, had the opportunity to indicate that they actually did want to see better ethical standards, they fluffed the opportunity. They failed the test. So when he said 
uh, when he was confronted about, well, what sort of ethical standard does this mean we are operating at now? Uh, the Prime Minister, John Key, said, there is quite a wide definition of ethics. The test I have to apply is the law. What a disappointment. It's no longer about principles now and the spirit of the law. It's about the black letter of the law. And it, which is in contrast to what the Cabinet Manual says, which is that ministers are expected to act lawfully and to behave in ways that upholds and is seen to uphold the highest ethical standards. And so we now have to introduce this legislation to try to get some flavour of that into local government. And that's why we are doing this bill. There are some there have been some good changes recommended coming out of the Select Committee process, things like the residence disclosure, so that uh, if you don't live in the ward, for example, that you're standing for, or in the area that, that you're standing for, you have to now dis disclose that. It doesn't prevent you from being a candidate in the ward, but people should know. It is good to have the warning on the voting documents about interference in uh, the way people vote. It is good to have the uh, costs of hoardings, particularly the timber involved in hoardings, not have to be accounted for because we know that that is material that is used and recycled from election to election. Uh, and it's good now that we have the rules clarified, at least for local uh, government elections, on the publication of returns and that uh, they, they can be published online. It's good also that the rules or the time frames are about prosecuting breaches of uh, electoral laws in local government elections are uh, clarified. And maybe perhaps in the committee stage we might debate whether or not the prosecution of breaches of electoral law might also be open for private prosecution as well. There is, however, sir, still a gap in all this, and there was an, a problem raised before the select committee by Alan McCroby, who's an expert in this country on local government elections, uh, and it was a problem that he observed in an election whereby the um, goods and services that are offered on a recurring basis for below market rates and also below the threshold of $300 might actually lead to an abuse. And the example he gave was of a small community newspaper happened to be in Kaiapoi. And we know how important Kaiapoi is to the Labour Party, the New Zealand Labour Party, because that is where one of our greatest leaders, Norman Kirk, got his political uh, head start. Uh, we know how important Kaiapoi is, but it was in Kaiapoi where there was this rort played out where selected candidates who were favourable or regarded with favour by the editor of a small community newspaper were given heavily discounted advertising space. On each occasion it was a small value of transaction, but they all flew under the radar and even in aggregate terms the, the value of that contribution from that editor was not declared, did not have to be declared. So under this legislation, uh, a little, um, uh, we need to make sure that a rort like that is captured. I'm not confident that it is captured in the wording of the legislation now, but that is a matter that we can deal with in the committee stages. And given the general consensus that we are arriving at around this legislation, I would hope that that would be given a good audience. And so, sir, on that basis, as my colleagues have said, we support this legislation. It is timely. It is disappointing the circumstances under which uh, we've, it has had to arrive at this House and we are having to debate it, but it will be good law and it will have the support of the House and uh, Labor will support it too. I call the Honourable Member Dr Jackie Blue. Thank you Mr Speaker. I'm pleased to speak to the Secretary.